Hey guys, my name is Ismaus and today I want to show you how I made uh, this terrain here or the road blend with the terrain. Uh, let me just show you. Because I've tried this several times, uh, several ways and I've found that uh, this is the easiest way to do it uh, because it gives you more flexibility. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So what I have here is a kind of a forest scene. I'm going to disable the trees here uh, because it's kind of um, making things uh, run too slow so let me just disable some of it so this is the grass uh, then, yeah so you can see what I have here and let me bring turn off this red border I can see we have uh, the road and uh, it's a separate mesh from the terrain itself I can see how this is and uh, if I sculpted another part of the road, so, so if I wanted uh, this instead of going this side, maybe let me extend or scale this. Uh, let me see, let me turn off this for a second. Let me extend this. This control. And uh, what I'm using here, I'm using uh, object mapping uh, that's why you can see that uh, i don't have to uv unwrap this again uh if i make an extrusion or if i edit the mesh again so everything is based on the geometry the mapping is based on the geometry so if i sculpt uh, i already have a tray on this let me just go into turn on dino topo so that i can add in extra geometry let me first smoothen uh, this area here uh, so let's say i wanted uh, so the road was coming through here and ending here. Let's say I wanted it to carve this side. Uh, then I would just use a brush like this. Let me just look at the terrain so, so that I can see how things are. So I'm holding down control so that I can carve out uh, that area for the road. So yeah, let's say I want this to be uh, my road. Now, it's going to smoothen some of these slopes here. We just add in some resolution. And I'm going to show you in another video how to set up the, uh, the terrain so that whenever you are sculpting, it updates uh, the textures, uh, the slope textures here. So if we go back and uh, reveal my road, let's unhide this. You can see that uh, this is a follow, the road is following uh, this curve here. I'm using this curve to control uh, the road. So I'll just add more control points uh, to make this curve uh, so that this uh, follows the curve I've just drawn here and then I can just select the road and increase my array count and now it's going off over the terrain a bit uh, we can fix that in a second and you can see how it's hugging the terrain so now I can just come in here and edit this spline or this curve to make it follow uh, the road itself. So it seems that uh, here, this area here is not wide enough for the terrain. Uh, the terrain here is not wide enough, so I can just come back uh, to the sculpt mode, make sure that I also turn on uh, the dyna topo, like that, and then sculpt that in. So the curve or the road will not update immediately uh, because I think it doesn't update while you are in sculpt mode. But uh, after we change, we go out of sculpt mode, it should be able to update. So just going to curve this even further. Like that. And see now the road has updated. Uh, it is sinking too much into the terrain. So I can, I have a few, I have a modifier stack here 
can see I'm using this green crab. I'm going to show you how to set this up, but I just wanted to show you how it works before I show you how. So I'm just going to offset this a bit so that the terrain is up a bit. Like that. Now, I'm also using a texture to kind of blend uh, the road into the terrain. And uh, if I look at, if you look at uh, the road itself, uh, it's repeated using the array. So I have a, a single piece so if I turn off all the modifiers, this piece here is repeated using the array modifier. And uh, the way I make it to blend uh, from the road out of the other terrain is that uh, I have a vertex, I've created some vertex paint masks. Let me just go to the vertex colors. Let's show you how that should look. Yeah, so you can see how this looks. So this is a mask I drew using vertex colors. Let me, I'm just going to remove these spots here. Because I think they don't blend in very nicely. So just have a try on how to, pre on uh, using vertex colors. But, uh, so, and I'm using this mask uh, to blend uh, this terrain with uh, Add the road with the terrain so add the curve then add the displacement just to make the road a bit uneven and then add the shrink wrap uh, to kind of make the road hug which makes it easier to blend uh, the road with the terrain and then smooth in everything after which is not really necessary i think uh, my offset is a bit too high Yeah, something like that. And uh, yeah, then you would come cover this seam uh, with something like uh, rocks or something. Oh, just move this closer to the terrain. Yeah, if you move it closer, then you shouldn't be able to see the seam. And uh, uh, another way to make this terrain, this uh, grass blending better with uh, this terrain is that to make sure that you're using the same materials here uh, i think my textures here are a bit different uh, let me see if i can get those so this is the road material and i'm using this grass uh which which is a mistake i should have used this grass for blending in here so let me fix that so this is the material let's see if i can select the entire material stack. So I think it's this. You can switch it out for this other material here. You can just copy this, copy, and then instead of using this, I can just uh, use this here. And it should make the blend more seamless. So let me try this and see. Okay, I think there's an issue with the scale. Yeah, there are a few things we would have to tweak here, especially the scale. So I think the best way to approach this is by using an empty to control uh, the scale of this material. So let me just. Uh, actually, I use I selected the wrong material. It's not that. So let me find uh, the actual material here. So I think it's uh, no. That's the mask. Is I think it's uh, yeah. It's this here. This is what I should have selected. So copy that and switch it out for this. You can even group it into a frame uh, so that you only have one node to, uh, to use here. Just make sure that uh, you give it some output nodes uh, that you can fit into the shader. So I select this node, hit N to view the properties. 
and I can go to I think uh, where is this yeah just tab into edit mode and uh, just drag the principal into the output uh, so that you can add uh, the output there now i can feed that directly into these and uh, i should be able to see the update okay there seems to be an issue here let me see this okay it seems to be using uh, object mapping sorry UV mapping and uh, this road doesn't have I think UVs so let's see if I unwrap that I'm not sure why it's not giving me the materials I expect here let's see let's see what's going on okay it seems like I'm still using the previous material I selected I'm not using this here and this is what I want so let me try copying it again uh, sometimes when you copy nodes uh, they don't really copy so you might want to double check and see that uh, you actually copying are they not so let me paste them here and see if that's exactly what i'm getting yeah so now you can see that uh, this is the same uh, material setup as this And uh, it's using object mapping, which is great, uh, but uh, it's kind of stretched in some areas, but uh, that's okay because we're going to be using a mask to mask that off. So again, let me just group this into its own uh, group so that it's easier to work with, Ctrl G, and uh, like so. Now I can use this. Can use this here and uh, that should give should give us a better blend uh, between other uh, road and uh, this material you can see like that Okay. okay, I think also uh, the road texts have changed direction for some reason. I think that's because of the UV mapping I did here. So let me just make sure that I rotate this again. yeah so let's talk about how to create the road itself and make it have the terrain so uh, just explaining uh, this uh, modifier stack that you see here so okay. yeah so after you make the terrain uh, like this I uh, you just start by creating the road so if it, you can start with a simple plane like this just scale it in the y-axis like that and uh, subdivide it before you subdivide it, make sure you apply uh, the scale, then subdivide it uh, so that you have some resolution to work with. And then you can texture it in, uh, give it uh, a road texture or a material. I'm just going to reuse whatever I have here. You can see what we have. And uh, it's showing only uh, the road material. Yeah, it's 
it's only showing the road material, uh, sorry, the grass material, uh, because we haven't created uh, the vertex color mask uh, to mask off uh, the grass and only show and so show the that area. So to do that, let's go to vertex paint. And uh, because we have just created a vertex color, uh, then it uh, switches, it gives us uh, that material. Now I can paint the areas uh, that I want to have the grass material. I can see that I think, yeah, the direction has been switched. So I can scale this on the X axis, just like that. And uh, then I can change to vertex to vertex paint. Now, I really have a, I'm a I have a, uh, a tutorial on how to set up our vertex colors and painting, but it's very simple. You just select the material and then select vertex colors, add a new vertex color. And then you can paint white or black uh, to create a mask. So this is going to help us blend uh, this ground with uh, uh, with the terrain but i also liked uh, the brown areas let me see if i can show i think this is the road yeah i like this uh, brownish color here uh, and uh, it's being masked out by this uh, vertex color so let me just bring it in a bit further uh, let me see where can i find that this uh, by the way, a time lapse of this video uh, of creating this is available on my second channel, Blender Money, uh, if you want to watch the entire process there. But I want to bring this in. Uh, I guess I should just do it while uh, showing the, the entire material stack, previewing the entire material. Let me turn off this bloom for a second. of some of these effects so I want to first bring in this uh, material here so I can just move it on the x-axis let's see Move it on the x-axis around there. Maybe even scale it. Just so parts of it can show. Yeah, something like that. Do the same for this side. Uh, another thing I did here is I added a profile. I may I gave uh, the road some bit of profile. So uh, since this is a dirt road, you'd expect the water to kind of erode parts of the road and uh, give it other kind of I don't know convex or concave shape. And uh, also add in some kind of uh, this kind of form here for where the tires would. Uh, Move. I don't want this sharp angle, so I'll just do it a bit like this. Now that would be a nice form uh, for the road. Let me expand it a bit on the X, like that. And uh, now you can give it an array. Just make sure you turn on merge and uh, make sure that uh, this the last edges here are flat so that they can weld nicely. Now you can create a curve object, add a curve, basic curve. Just scale it up and uh, just add some control points. 
if you hold on control and left click and right click you can now uh, create new control points now you can just increase the length of this and then give a curve object a curve modifier i can see then you can move this on the x-axis something like that and you scale it down a bit uh, you don't want to see this pinching here uh, when you see that it means that uh, the curve there is a very large curve uh, or corner there so we'll just move it make sure that it's centered onto uh, the curve itself like you see there so here just correct that like that now what you would do is uh, have this on the terrain so that you can follow the terrain let me just rotate this maybe scale it down a bit let me hide uh, this original road and let me hide these clouds as well so you can see what we have and uh, now to make this conform to the terrain what you would do is uh, just add a shrink wrap modifier to the mesh and select uh, the road and see now how it's conforming to the terrain and then just give it a nice offset so that you kind of get that uh, so that it's not uh, intersecting with the terrain itself you can see how that looks you can see how it's seamlessly blending with the, uh, the terrain now if you add some grass in areas uh, or plants rocks uh, it will make it even blending better uh, let me bring back my second road you can see see how that looks maybe let me just offset this uh, so that is a little bit up and more exposed And see now we have two roads and if you want you can just select uh, the array and instead instead of using this count here you can change it to fit curve length and select the curve you want to fit uh, the curve to and now when you extrude uh, this curve or when you make it longer the road itself will also increase I will also lengthen. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, give this curve a shrink modifier as well. So that is also on top of the surface. And uh, make sure you turn this on, uh, this curve here, and make sure that that effect is uh, taken up uh, by the road as well. As well. So then you can increase the offset a bit. Uh, don't forget to also increase the offset uh, make sure you change uh, the wrap me method uh, for the mesh from nearest surface at uh, project and now just move uh, the surface down onto the onto the object actually nearest point seems to be working better here or oh, normal tangent works better here sometimes it depends on the uh, on, on your scene it's going to be scene by scene basis so just make this above uh, the surface so that we can always see this, the road above the surface now if you want to edit the road we just find uh, the curve and uh, edit that you can see what we have this so you can see how this makes things much much easier now if we bring back the grass 
the smaller grass and then the trees you can see what we have here we have two roads now just make sure that uh, when you're adding in the trees are uh, they're not going uh, through the road uh, like this and uh, the way you do that is by just using our uh, weight painting just make sure that uh, whatever particle system is uh, instancing the trees doesn't instance other trees over let me just say, I'm not sure which one okay I think it's this one that's it. so you just subtract uh, that area from where the trees should grow it. so for example like here just get rid of that by use of uh, vertex paint or weight paint and I uh, should have something like that and I think this area looks quite nice let's add in some mites well seen yeah that's it thank you for watching